Good afternoon and welcome to the lunchtime show with me, Kim Brits, proudly powered by leadership by design.co, leading the charge with insights, information, and ultimately effective results. Joining me in today's marketing and leadership segment, marketing communications expert and uh, co host, Craig Paisley. How are you doing, Craig? Everyone, I'm great. Thank you. Yeah, good to be chatting. Um, yeah, I've been out and about between meetings today, and it was 36 degrees Celsius in the car at one stage, and I was there like, what <laughs> the heck? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on with the weather. It's just <laughs> I mean, unreal. I'm under fans the whole day. So I've, I've, yeah. <laughs> no, you leave a, a beautiful uh, air-conditioned environment and you take a walk to the car and you're sweating by the time you get in. But uh, a glorious days we've been having of, of late. And, uh, yeah, we should, we should be outdoors. Um, you know, that's where, that's where this flexibility of work really needs to come to the fore, where you can just get out and go and enjoy the, the spectacular days that we have and then come back and work at night. Yeah, and I, uh, this is a, like where I wish I I actually had a pool right now because I'd be like after this call I'd be in the pool. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with you on that, Craig. So I mean, I know that uh, this month our theme for the month has been around leadership, and uh, we we've unpacked some really interesting conversations, and um, you've you've brought us some beautiful information today around uh well i'll let you preface that but what i did want to start with was a, a, a last line that i found in this document that i was like um and it's a play off of the book <laughs> yeah. oh that's so funny because i took the book out oh, yeah. to reference and go guys there's a there's a there's a great little linkage as well yeah to take, can you believe it but i mean uh, part of this and, and you know it's not something i always share it's not common knowledge but my i always say it's my spirit am, animal uh, and that's an eagle because, you know, uh, I reference leadership to sort of like a, a metaphor of being an eagle. You've got an acute eyesight. Um, they are they are um, predators. They hunt for what they want. Um, they are just, you know, the best birds in the sky, basically. <laughs> and that's why everyone should be an eagle, especially if you're a leader. But, I mean, um, what I wanted to take out of this document is it says – Today's leaders must be like eagles. Don't flap their they they don't who don't flap their wings harder or strain against the stream of the wind when they encounter great turbulence. Instead, they become even more still, knowing that they have the agility and self possession to soar even higher. And I was like, that's exactly the, <laughs> the and, and and that that key that key word agility. Yes. We we definitely picked up on it um in last week's conversation where where we yeah, you know, again the McKinsey.com article, what is leadership and, and agility really was one of those key themes that, that we covered there, Kevin. Yeah. So so just to jump straight in then, you know, the the, the topic today again, another great McKinsey quarterly report. This one is is a few years old. Um crawling through through the library, found this one because I believe it has got absolute relevance today as much as it did have um, when, when it was initially published. And, and really, it, it, it looks at the five practices that transformational leaders must hone, Kevin. And, and the, the, the article is titled Leading with Agility. The article was, was published by a trio of Sam Burton, uh, Joanne Louvi, and Tiffany Fogel. And and it really what what it does is it just it, it starts with a strong clarion call that disruptive times call for transmo transformational leaders with a knack for addressing complex problems. And to navigate effectively, we must learn to take note, let go, and become more complex ourselves. And I and I quite I quite like that that sort of contradiction in a way where you're thinking that you know you, you actually need to let go and just um, you know take a step back and simplify things but actually it's the opposite you need to become a bit more complex in your cells and and i want to open uh, read read um the opening paragraph here which notes that we live in an age of accelerating disruption every company is facing up to the profound changes wrought by digitization industry boundaries have become permeable data algorithms and artificial intelligence are changing the nature of forecasting decision making and the workplace itself all things happening at once and established companies are responding by rethinking their business models, redesigning their organizations, adopting novel agile management practices and embracing design 
thinking. And Kevin, really what, what's important there is, is that you know, a big a big burden has hung over leaders for for a long time here. And 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 really it's because often they've had no clear answers on what that disruption means to their business or how to deal with the disruption in their business. And the very nature of disruption means that even the the, the best, most prescient leaders will be steering their company into and through a fog of uncertainty. And 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 the beauty about this article is that it, it's starting to talk around what are those five actions and, and realms of thinking that can help you navigate effectively through that fog of uncertainty. And a and great point that jumped out at me is that the problem isn't the problem, Kevin, it's the relationship to the problem that's the problem. And that that was just so profound when I read that. In other words, we have many of the skills needed to handle what's been thrown at us, but actually when faced with the continual complexity and this unprecedented pace, the survival instincts kick in. And, and that's really where we need to come back into that space, find that inner agility, but also, you know, the, the, the brains are constantly seeking out the status, which you, you know all too well in, in, in the work that you do. But, but it's really important that at this point in time, when leaders are facing these challenges, it's about visionary, empathetic and creative leadership and and not falling into those conservative rigid old habits that we uh, tend to lean back on Craig, uh, yeah, the, uh, the problem isn't the problem right i love that yes statement. yes yeah I, I don't know if it was you or another coach that i spoke to but um one of, one of the sentiments that i grew up with my brother um and we just learned this as a as a coping mechanism was you know um my mother always flung us in front of people when we were younger and said sing you know and so we ended up yeah. singing funerals and weddings and <laughs> everything and th what was interesting about the coping mechanism we learned to uh, detach from the the sad moments especially when it was a funeral but what the learning was is you know one of the things that we we always joke about is going well why are you giving it so much meaning Sure. Yeah. And the moment the moment you step into well, the problem isn't the problem, right? The problem is is our relationship with the problem. <laughs> then suddenly you kind of go, oh, okay, you know, I'm just giving it so much meaning. That's why I'm so attached to the problem. Yeah. So I become part of the problem, and now it's then you're embroiled. You're not actually looking at it and going, how do I take my set of skills and apply myself? So I love that relationship. Point and of view. And and what's interesting to that because there's there's a lovely build on that into into one of the the the, the other paragraphs that really start yeah you know, unpacking that complexity aspect is because you know, you cannot solve a complex problem by stepping away and trying to be simple you you need to understand the emergent possibilities so you need to become complex in your thinking to ensure that you can manage that particular aspect and and the the article finds five personal practices that can meaningfully contribute to that mindset needed for for leadership effectiveness during these transformative uh, times and it talks about you know moving to the complexity aspect to ensure that you you're able to work through through this and and really these these five practices are are actually extensions of take note what it says here the timeless principles of centered leadership Taken together, they can be the building blocks for your personal inner agility. And and you know, let's let's quickly just pick on 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 the five, and then we can at least cover the five in in their broadest concept, and then we'll go to each of them in more detail. So the first the first one is again, this is this, yeah, it, it all seems like contradictions. Pause to move faster. <laughs> yeah. Pausing while remaining engaged in action is a contuitive step that leaders can use to create space counterintuitive sorry counterintuitive step that leaders can use to create space for clear judgment original thinking and speedy purposeful action so when you read it to that extent you can see you know how much sense it does make the second this the the second point here is embrace your ignorance good news ideas can come from anywhere competitors can emerge from neighboring industries and a single technology can a, a product can reshape your business. In such a world, listening and thinking from a place of not knowing is a critical means of encouraging the discovery 
of original, unexpected breakthrough ideas. Yeah. The third, the third frame here is is radically reframe the questions, and this really is, is starting to to get to 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 that that association with with the challenge. One way to discern the complex patterns that give rise to both problems and windows of emergent possibilities is to actually change the nature of the questions we're asking ourselves. And asking yourself challenging questions may actually help you unblock your existing mental model. The fourth point here is set direction, not destination. And there, there was a lovely expansion on this particular point here. And you know, in our complex systems and, and, and in this complex era that we live in, Kevin, solutions are really straightforward. Instead of telling your team to move from point A to point B, actually join them in a journey towards the general direction. Lead yourself and your team with a purposeful vision, not just your objectives. Really important point that. And then the fifth point, just test your solutions and yourself. So again, quick, cheap failures can avert major uh, uh, costly disasters. And it's really good to see how many businesses are practicing the and, and, and allowing the practice of fast fail forward fast quickly in in their business models and the the fundamental silicon valley tenant is is true for you as it is for your company so applying that to self as much as it is to your company thinking of yourself as a living laboratory helps make the task of leading an agile ever shifting company exciting instead of terrifying and i and i really like those but to be clear kevin you know these these steps aren't on the magic mushroom moment, um, but really they 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 are all interconnected, and and they really need to be worked at consciously and practiced in a regular basis to ensure that you're able to really take the business and and rise above the the noise and the clutter of of, of this complex world that we're living in. Yeah, Craig. Uh, yeah, I, the fact that they break them down into five simple steps, uh, you know. <sighs> It always lends itself to one of the the foundations of coaching in itself. The brain loves structure and strategy. And if you create some structure and you give it some strategy, people will follow it. But if there's no structure and strategy, people kind of have a, a blasé kind of vague approach to what they're doing. But I mean, I here's a simple, simple, plain, simple structure that's broken down into. And if you just follow these little steps, uh, you know, you're stepping into a certain type of leadership uh, skill in any case yes yes so so to, to that point let's let's have a look at the, the the five steps in a little bit more detail so the first is pause to move to move faster yeah and you know the the reference here is that most executives actually have trouble pulling back from their obsessive need to to lead teams and tackle the issues at hand and and for many um you know the focus has always been key to success, but actually trying to shift away from that and, and surviving one crisis after another by relying on those tried and tested methods just isn't enough these days, Kevin. And and the ability to pause in this chaos is, is definitely a much higher attribute for great leadership. And as much as it is counterintuitive, it definitely is one of the factors that's going to ensure much better success in driving that change. And it, and, and it really can lead to a, a, a word that we haven't had in the conversation for a while, it can lead to greater creativity and efficiency in the organization as well. And and it definitely it helps create that safe space for self-awareness and, and for recentering yourself as a leader, which is something that you really need to be able to move to the next point, Kevin. Um, claiming that space is, as the, as the, the article notes, very hard because there isn't a recipe uh, formulated for this. So yeah, some leaders will do meditation, some will take a walk, some may jump in the pool as we we're talking about earlier on and just, you know, cooling the body and mind down. Um, some some will just, you know, leave their, their technology for a while and disengage. All of those are vitally important because it's about pausing and, and attaining self-awareness and it's the things that you don't immediately get results from that you are lacking. And and every bit of benefit counts here. So, so if you don't start the journey of learning um, on how to decouple from the context and the immediate responses that it provokes, you're definitely going to experience a much harder journey to becoming open to new ideas or actually to even becoming a better listener, Kevin. And both of these are traits that are actually quite critical in the moments where, where your vision is clouded and where you need to be able to 
you know, create that clear path in the direction, not or at least in the journey, not in the end point. Craig, just on the pausing, just real quick around you know what's happening with your brain in in that instance is is it's beautiful self regulation. You know, the moment you you you're taking that pause, you're self regulating your nervous system. Um, and like you were saying, and you when you're interrupting that pattern, you're not into you, you don't get into the habit formed reactive state, but you're also interrupting kind of uh, the the uh, a flight fight freeze uh, kind of form kind of uh, approach to whatever you know shows up in your environment. The yes. moment you interrupt that state, uh, your brain stops and you kind of take a breath, do some meditation take that pause because what it is doing is it's re-regulating uh, your actual nervous system and that's why you think better so you obviously will go faster when you're when you when your mind is clear you know when people say let me sleep on it the the the, the aged old grandfathers that always said let me sleep on it <laughs> they were wise for a reason right <laughs> that's great and and that's just a perfect segue into the second point which is embrace your ignorance yeah um and and key here is you know, as, as, as hard as point one is, embracing ignorance is really, really hard, Kevin. And it's about letting go of, of your need um, to know and, and challenging your own identity about your own competence as well. It's a really, really tough place for, for someone to be. And embracing ignorance really cuts out against the grain for most of us. And actually, as the article notes, can take a, a lifetime to master. But to get started, you need to ask yourself some probing questions. And, and one of those, the first is, do I actually suspend judgment and listen for what is below the words? Or do I listen for what I already know or believe? It's just a fantastic question that and and if it's if it's about listening for what you already know or believe which it is in in many instances for most of us um yeah you you actually just not going to be able to get through to the direction you need to and and the second question here is what would have i have to let go to truly listen really great question that and then the third is what is the very worst that could happen and, and the answer to that can actually just help you find those hidden fears, which are really important. And um, yeah, when, when, when you're able to address the hidden fears, you're definitely able to ask yourself the fourth question is, am I the leader I want to be? And I really think you can't answer that question until you've addressed the, 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 the three previous questions. And, and if the answer is not yet, which, which is really great that you could be so honest with yourself, then you know why you're embracing ignorance must become a priority. And asking these questions may not dissolve the reactive habits or you know, pause them. Um, they can, however, begin this process of enlightenment to letting go and finding some of those new capacities within yourself, Kevin. Craig, what's really interesting about the the questions and pausing like that and tackling your your own, I mean, when you when you hear it, embrace the ignorance, embrace yes. your ignorance. Uh, immediately your ego gets in the way and you kind of go like, uh, you know, nobody wants to find out that they are not competent or efficient enough or capable enough of, of answering a question. But, you know, as a coaching skill, one of the things that we teach on the coaching programs is if you're not asking the right questions, you're not going to, you're not going to get the right answers you're looking for. And to give you just a simple analogy to that is there's a difference between the map versus the territory. And you can look at a map and kind of just see, oh, well, you know, this is, it shows there's terrain and everything, but until you actually in the territory, you won't know what the territory is like and, until you ask the right questions. And we use that frame because if you're asking the right questions, you're getting into someone's territory. And the moment you're asking the right kind of questions, you're also uh, giving them an opportunity to share the right kinds of answers, right? Um, so asking questions is a, is such a core critical skill especially when you're in a leadership position especially when you're dealing with people if you if you're not asking the right questions you're probably putting your foot in your own mouth uh, and you're only coming <laughs> from one frame, right and when you're coming from that one frame um your frame is just yours and usually uh, it's a biased one because uh we're human absolutely and and again point three just the perfect segue is that, yeah talking around reframing your questions because it's it's not mm -hmm. about asking the question of the problem you want to solve it's actually going beyond that and and 
really asking open-ended questions that are designed to actually bring multiple often hidden perspectives into the conversation kevin and when when you're able to ask the and what else you're definitely able to unearth viewpoints that that really haven't been presented or considered for a long time here and and here radically reframing questions isn't just good for the company it's actually a critical skill the, the article really emphasizes a critical skill for any modern executive as it takes time to build this capability and skill so start by challenging yourself revisit the diversity of your personal network interesting point that um for which many of us actually looks too familiar so again interesting point because it's, it's making you step out of those boundaries into an unsafe space and and another useful uh, um a prod for for being able to to reframe questions is, is actually to ask yourself challenging questions such as what is wrong with my assumption what am i missing and am i expanding the boundaries of the problem to allow for the unexpected factors um really really great questions to ask yourself and when you can actually identify the, uh, um, who who most opposes your points of view and understand the story from their points of view you're definitely going to find yourself in a position where you'll be much more willing and able to accept their points of view and use it to move forward Craig, um, True Detective, Jodie Foster's new movie that she's she's doing, uh, it's called True Detective Night Country. In the show, they quite specifically say, well, she as her, her character actually points up and says, you're asking the wrong question. You ask, she like gets aggressive every time someone asks a question. And eventually you kind of go, like, lady, why are you so aggressive? But as the show goes on and sort of as you follow her character through the show, you, you start to understand exactly this, this, this conversation we're having here around until you're asking the right kinds of questions you're going to find the actual answers you're looking for and if 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 the question you're asking is just the obvious one that's not the right question right because if it's obvious then why would we be asking the obvious question like really challenge the way that you're looking at the situation the problem the challenge the moment that you're going through and um, reframe that to actually ask a different set of questions and the, the the article talks directly to that point in the sense that it says, yeah, when when you when you are asking questions and and the conversations are taking you into the unknown, this is actually where you will find those most valuable answers. So when yeah. you step into the unknown, you also boost the odds of getting a glimpse of the inner blockers that can in inhabit you from listening with inner at least leading with inner agility, Kevin. So yeah, great great point too focused on your own needs step into that difficult space don't be overprotective and uh, allow yourself to go into the unknown the fourth point here is set direction not a destination and this for me was probably the the one that resonated the most for for me here yeah. and and it's it's having the agility stepping away from the rigidity because when you set the direction it's on the predetermination of your understanding of the steps taken to get there. But when you're setting the destination, you may be presented with a host of unknowns and you need to be able to address those in real time. So instead of sharing a vision of a general direction for the company, actually look at a destination and work with your team, give them context and see how collectively you can actually guide yourselves in the business on that journey to the end point. And, and setting a direction that, that, important for leaders set a direction that's rooted in purpose and meaning and again you know purpose we've had some wonderful conversations around that if if there's no purpose and understanding of a purpose for the business well then you just shouldn't be in that business but when you when you have that direction rooted in purpose and meaning you can inspire positive action and invite all of the team along with you and actually this is what's wonderful is help stretch them out of their comfort zones as well and and it's about making it personal kevin start with your own personal vision what really matters to you what do you want to create through your leadership and leadership style what do you want to be remembered for what do you want to discover and and these are the kinds of questions that that really can help set your value set and challenge your value set and in doing so create the right framework for yourself and then take it into into the others that you're working with and leading. Craig, I mean, I'm so glad that you know this is a part of this this conversation because um, in our leadership um, exec exclusive executives um, coaching program, one of the, the 
the key, because we work through a whole personal uh, development plan for you as an individual. Um, and one of the key things that we look at is your purpose and meaning. And what is your own personal mission statement? Right. And it's, you know, from a coach's perspective, when you're dealing, you know, with an executive and they really start defining and redefining what it is they actually want to be doing and why they're doing it and what is the purpose, you know, it's it's the strangest thing to see like their lives in front of your eyes kind of change quite dramatically. And it's purely based on the fact that they're really discovering what their own meaning is and what their own purpose is. Um, and what do you create and what is your leadership style and what are you wanting to put out in the world? And uh, when you do that, it, it's a profound shift in how your thinking supports, you know, where that direction is. And it's not just a destination. It's that whole journey in towards that direction, right? This becomes your North Star. And the more you follow the North Star, the more, you know, everything kind of aligns towards what that is. So I love the fact that, you know, it, it mentions direction versus destination yeah yeah absolutely then the last point kevin it's it's about testing your solutions and yourself and what i, what I like about this report is, is it's it's this constant uh, um, internalization aspect as well so yes it's leadership is about leading and, and taking people along the journey but really it's it's very much about self-reflection this article there's no doubt about it and and developing that inner agility is a process of accepting less control than makes you feel safe but that doesn't mean that you have to embrace chaos it doesn't mean you just let everything go and and throw yourself into a, a, a you know a, a rough sea and the the article does reference the silicon valley uh, region because you know a lot of the companies that have experienced this this turmoil that, that the article references but the silicon valley companies are networks designed so that ideas will spark from many different corners of the organization and and i really like that 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 brings some of that creativity concept to bear as well how do they surface the best ones well by testing often creating safe to fail experiments and then rewarding learning and and that's that's important is to be able to have those projects come to the fore work with the teams give them enough support and space to actually trial the product and if it fails it doesn't matter use it to move forward and then reward it and and testing fast and small is is definitely critical for agile companies kevin and it shows that you can quickly respond to tech technological shifts or or even the, the, the change market conditions. Um, and macro failures are therefore reduced to chances of macro failures. Yeah. What what's interesting here is is really applying the testing concept to yourself because that is key to developing your own inner agility. And it says that you need to create mindful experiments for yourself. First step, ditch the slideshow presentation for an important meeting instead try to stimulate unconventional thinking by telling a story what a wonderful proposition yeah testing and experimentally experimenting is 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 quite interconnected with the other four practices of the inner agility kevin and the experiments that we conduct definitely will enable us to move forward in in, in the right direction while the process of setting a direction that's rooted in purpose will definitely help us build courage to experiment on the journey. Pausing helps us to decouple from the context and develop comfort from not knowing, uh, which obviously is an issue condition for any meaningful experiment. And then the last line here is reframing and expanding the questions we ask ourselves gives us that broader perspective we need to create experiments that will move us in that right direction, Kevin. And again, you know, I, I, I think it might be worth just re-emphasizing those, those, those questions. It's about, you know, what is wrong with my assumption? What am I missing? Am I expanding the boundaries of the problems to allow for unexpected factors? And yeah, what what is my unexpected point of view there? Absolutely, Craig. And what's what I love about the testing, test your solution with yourself, right? Is I currently I work in an environment now where the head of a sales environment has literally um, broken off a piece of his sales team. Um, and put them in a different kind of environment and said, okay, guys, we're gonna we're gonna healthy test with each other, right? Um, and you won't believe how how well this new team is doing 
you know, in comparison to the, the team that they've actually come from. Um, so it's it's a beautiful, and I, for you know, especially for a sales environment, it's a beautiful position to kind of go this healthy competition and going, hang on, what are you guys doing? What are we doing? What are you doing? Why is it working? Um, but it, it creates a, a beautiful sort of um, contrast on, you know, in the same environment, but yet working healthily, you know, to get to where you're going. I think it's a brilliant sort of frame for any leader to be able to test themselves and test what they're doing. Yeah, that's that's courage as well. That's that's fantastic. I really do appreciate that. Yeah. And then just, the, you know, the last the last paragraph, a good couple of lines here that I want to read ends in that fantastic reference to the eagle. And it's really I, I want to read this because it's it's got such powerful reference and and points of advice on, on moving forward here. So it notes that in times of complexity and high stress, we find ourselves, we find our sense of our own competence and a sense of self continually challenged. We have two choices. The first is try to reduce discomfort by falling back on trusted habits or embrace the complexity and use it to learn and grow. And the great leaders are going to be using point two, embrace the complexity. Bold leaders will develop a new relationship to uncertainty and obviously a new trust in, in, in that regard. We must grow more complex from within. Taken together, the five practices that are covered in the documents are the foundation of a mindset that is comfortable with leading despite and through uncertainty. The more you practice these steps, the more you will develop that inner agility. Tap into your creativity and enjoy the ride each small failure will teach you something and each success will help confirm that it is possible to lead effectively without having all of the answers kevin to quote as you started the conversation today's leaders must be like eagles who don't flap their wings harder or strain against the wind stream when they encounter greater turbulence instead they become even more still knowing that they have the agility and self-possession to soar even higher. I love it, guys. If you want to check that out, leading with inner agility, uh, and that's uh, McKinsey Quarterly. If you want to go and check it out on their website, um, and QRT for today, Craig is success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Beautiful, and that that just plugs so nicely into this article, Kevin. It does, it does. Thank you. Um, guys, please remember to like, share, and tune into the Limestone Series every Wednesday and Thursday. And for myself and Craig, have a fantastic week. Craig, I know you off to the, your next meeting, and uh, I will see you soon. Yeah, thank you. Great great to have your points of view on this. this you know, the, these leadership conversations are so stimulating because, you, you know, you're the, you're the specialist in this, and it's, it's just amazing to see the correlation to the points referenced in your book and every one of these chats. Yeah, I mean, I, like when you started and part of what you were saying, you know, this is a, a rather, this is an older article that you came across. What was interesting is as you go through it, you, you kind of see that even, you know, a couple of years ago, these conversations have been leading towards where we are and building up to where we are in a, in a leadership capacity. So it's it's just building onto everything. I mean, you and I, you know, doing the Lunch Time series as well, uh, all the information that we've also unpacked uh, you know in the last three years all of this is just kind of going you know we, we definitely on the right track and we know yes, what we're yes. and, and what's beautiful about these articles is that you know there's new young leaders that come into organizations they need to learn the tenets of what that great leadership capability looks like and these points of reference have direct impact and an ability to help guide them to become effective leaders and effective in self as well absolutely i love it Fantastic, Craig. So I will see you next week. Yeah, thank you. Have a good week in between. Cheers. Cheers for now.